now how do you set your peep you know everybody probably likes to listen to this right peep setting peep titration recruitment maneuvers this seems to be a fancy for many people but actually there is nothing too big you just need to understand how peep helps look at that image in the box okay uh, so on the left hand there are two images the the under a that is probably before application of peep you have the dense consolidation that's the alveolus filled with gray that is a dense consolidation i told you the dorsal most lung which is not going to open up no matter what you do okay you apply peep you don't apply peep it's not going to open up the one in the middle slightly shrunken one that's the collapsed one that is probably there in the middle zone that i told you again on the ct scan where your intervention can help okay application of peep may open up that alveolus and the one on the extreme left is the baby lung alveolus which is already open that's going to take all the tidal volume preferentially okay and see what happens after application of peep on the right side panel nothing has happened to the dense consolidation the middle one has opened up that is favorable and see how you are beginning to hurt the functional lung or the baby lung you have actually over distended you would by this time have converted that into a dead space okay so in a nutshell i mean i'm i'm going to uh, make it more complex don't worry so traditionally we start off with at least peep 5 there is no such thing called as zip you know people say zero peep nowhere okay so traditionally we start with at least 5 again i'm not entering into the controversy of whether there is a physiological peep or not i'm using these terms so that just to create some curiosity you may want to go and read back right and uh, starting from 5 you need to slowly increase and see for certain changes clinical changes as well as ventilatory changes clinical changes obviously you want to have an improvement in the spo2 you want an improvement in the respiratory rate provided the patient is not paralyzed okay but severe ards i presume right now the patient is paralyzed you want to make sure that there are no hemodynamic consequences the there should be no uh, you know bradycardia or hypotension happening which all happen because with application of peep i want you to understand that you are going to be increasing the intrathoracic pressure you are going to reduce the venous return to the right heart and in a, ultimately you are going to reduce cardiac output left ventricular cardiac output also a whole bunch of other heart lung interactions also happen okay so you need to be aware of these things you need to monitor them real time okay and simultaneously ventilatory parameters obviously what would you want to improve these are all stiff lungs okay stiffness we refer to that as compliance or elastance okay these two are opposite of each other compliance is the ability to open up the ease with which the alveolus opens up elastance is the opposite of compliance okay so the ease with which or the force with which it recoils okay so recoil is elastance opening up is compliance okay so naturally with application of peep you want to see an improvement in compliance the static compliance okay many of the new generation ventilators give you a straight forward value display on the side sometimes you may have to calculate it is not too difficult you just need to know your peep you need to know your plateau pressure you need to know the tidal volume there are formulas you can calculate okay now if you look on the left side uh, there is this box in pink that is called the peep fio2 table as proposed by the ards network now this is the table this is the nomogram or it's just an arbitrary table you know a sequential increase you increase fio2 a couple of times observe for change nothing happen then increase the peep a couple of times nothing happens go back to fio2 increase the fio2 a couple of times you know go in a zigzag manner you can just follow that right so this is just an arbitrary table as proposed by ards network this is what they have used in most of the trials and for the level of beginners for the ones in resource limited settings i would just suppose you go ahead look up for this ards network table and just go ahead and do this okay for a given fio2 you need to pick the suggested peak okay keep going back and forth this is all you need to do simultaneously please look at the monitor of course ultimately you want the oxygenation target to improve but you should not hurt your patient there should be no hemodynamic consequences first thing that happens is hypotension followed by bradycardia cardiac arrest is not at all uncommon with a peep maneuver keep that in mind right now i'm going to make it a little more complex you have two kind of peep fio2 tables there is something called a high peep fio2 table there is something called a low peep fio2 table i'm sorry that table over there is a little screwed up after loading onto this software something seems to have happened 
you can look up on the web okay for high peep and low peep tables no in whom will you use high peep table in whom will you use a low peep table right uh, forget whatever jargon that i've written on the left and right the green references just forget all that okay take it from me somebody with a mild disease somebody with a very compliant lung right probably a low peep is enough somebody with moderate to severe ARVS, a high peep may be the suitable one. This comes into context. Now, I would like to pitch in COVID pneumonia or COVID ARDS over here because, you know, there is this big confusion that it is only a pneumonia. You will not use ARDS strategies. You will not uh, use the PEEP FIO2. See, wh whether it is pneumonia or ARDS, just trust me, these simple, uh, you know, principles apply no matter what it is. Okay, take it from me. I don't want to make it any more complex. Okay, now I'm going to give you another uh, clarified way of adopting a high peep or a low peep table. Excuse that. Okay, just do this. You have a patient, the same patient, R1, 45 year old male with ARDS. Start with FIO2 of, uh, I'm sorry, FIO2, uh, you start with one, of course. Give a peep of five. 5 to 8, most of the times cardiogenic pulmonary edemas generally start showing phenomenal recovery. Okay. Now, you try to do this maneuver, 5 to 15 maneuver, provided there is no hypotension, provided there is no hypovolemia, provided there is no undue tachycardia, provided there is no other reason why I anticipate an imminent cardiac arrest or a cardiac consequence. Okay. There are a lot of uh, prerequisites. So, go ahead and increase the PEEP from 5 to 15 see if there is any good things happening good things of course i told you on the monitor you want to see a visible improvement in the spo2 you want and on the ventilator you will look for what happens to the tidal volume obviously you want to see the tidal volume improve okay a stiff lung which has not been able to accommodate even let's say 200 ml you want to deliver 360 but it's not even allowing 200 ml by that time it's hitting off the peak pressure okay uh, with this maneuver, if you see that 200 has now become 250 or 260, then that is a favorable response. Simultaneously, also look at what happens to compliance. Either you will calculate or you can just look up at your uh, display screen, the user interface of the ventilator that will show you the compliance. See your starting values, see what happens to the ending value. If you see a favorable response, somebody who has favorable response to this 5 to 15 maneuver, you can use the high peep table okay uh, uh, so here you are seeing the table properly unlike the previous slide in someone who is not developing a response either there is no change either there is no response or if they are actually deteriorating in them you will use the low peep fio2 table basically the difference between these two tables is that you see that you know in low peep it takes a long time for us to start using higher peep values okay we are lingering around with uh, lingering around with peep of less than 10 till an fio2 of 0.7 okay take a close look into that whereas in high peep table uh, you know, we start using PEEP of uh, even 12, 14, 16, already there with an FIO2 of 0.4, okay? So typically, high PEEP table is meant for those people who have a significant amount of recruitable lung. For people who either don't have a recruitable lung or for people who have a very compliant system, you know, the so-called L type of COVID. See, I'm slowly trying to sneak in some COVID concepts. The ones who have the a good compliance or the low elastins covid lungs low peep fio2 table the ones who have the high com i mean uh, high elastins type covids there you will use a high fio2 table peep fio2 table okay so you reasonably know how to set a peep for this given patient